Isn't that interesting that, that Jesus was delighted always to minister to people, to meet people's needs, to heal people, to do, to do that. Uh, he did it joyfully and willingly, unreservedly, but he, he couldn't trust them. He, he, knew, he knew their heart, he knew them. So, so he, he dealt with this group of people as he, as he does today. And the, the, the moral of it and the point of it is that you get to decide what, what group you're in. Um, it's, it's your decision, it's your choice. And so uh, we know that, of course, he dealt with the babes, babies, you know. And uh, he, um, he fed the babies milk, the milk of the word. You know, the Bible tells us that, the, that we start our Christian walk, our life, with the, with the good milk of the word that we may grow thereby, you know. Uh, so everyone starts drinking milk in the spiritual, just like in the natural. But, but, but out, out of those babies, uh, some decide and they prefer to grow and, and to those, then, he gives bread to the children. You know, he gives the children bread. And, and, and then if you continue in your walk and your pursuit, then um, he gives meat. He gives you a little meat for the, for the men and, and for the young men. And as you, as you, if you continue, there's, there's the strong meat for the, for the mature men. And then there's the... Everybody smile when I say this. There's the hidden manna for the overcomers. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's, our, that's our invitation and our opportunity is to continue to pursue. And as we do, um, we're promoted in our diet and we, we begin to be fed. Uh, more substance, even even the uh, the mysteries. The back back to Matthew 13. Lord, why do you speak to some uh, in parables? He said, "Well, because to you it's given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, and uh, and, and the mysteries. It's a it's a, a, a word from uh, from the Greek language or translated from the language. It means uh, it's it's mysterion. It means a mystery." Um, he, it's, he, it's given to you to know the mysteries, the mysterion of the, of the kingdom. And, and that word means uh, to be initiated. Yes. So there's, as, you, as you grow in your faith, in your walk, in your intimacy with him, and, and, uh, and see each of those positions of people, he loved them all. But, you know, the babies... Uh, they were they were fed their milk and they loved their milk and they lived on their milk and unfortunately I think there are millions of Christians that that uh, never have an opportunity to ever get anything beyond the milk of the word and I think that's a terrible tragedy actually but but um, uh, you know they that's just just that's on them and but um, uh, we he, he wants us to grow and gives us opportunity to grow and, and feeds us a different a different um, diet as, as we do um, as we pursue him he wants people that he can trust and then and part of the pursuit is the initiation and you know what initi an initiation is you know clubs and, and secret societies and different people they have initiations and, and that's the way the kingdom is it, to to grow and mature you have to be initiated and uh, you know, but for us, the initiation is the continued pursuit. As you pursue him continuously, that pursuit is the initiation. That is what qualifies you uh, to get an upgrade, you know. And uh, some of you check into hotels and you get on. People call me once in a while on the flight. They say, Dan, I got an upgrade. I got an upgrade. I say, yeah. Uh, I've had those too, you know. They're they're nice, you know. Um, so uh, he wants us to grow and to, and to keep growing. And so we know that from the Apostle Paul, he and this this was a 
some years ago was a tremendous challenge in my life. Because I read where Paul said about this man, which of course he was talking about himself, how he went to the third heaven. And I didn't, at that time, I didn't know there was a third heaven. I mean, I was trying my best to get in the first one, you know. I thought, <laughs> my God. So, but, but uh, yeah. And, but he said, and then, and then he, he went on to say that he had seen something. He had seen things. And he'd heard things. Um, and, he, and he said that they were unlawful for him to speak or to teach those things. I, I want to come, help me remember to come back to that. You know, I, I, my, I always preach with an interpreter because all, all of our ministries is for years have been cross-cultural. I always use an interpreter. And I, have always, I have to have a good interpreter that, that, that can do the, ling- the language well, but I also have to have an interpreter with a good memory because my interpreter's responsibility is not only to interpret correctly what I'm saying, it's also his responsibility to help me remember what I was talking about when I forget what I was talking about. Now, you're laughing, but that's true. Yeah, it is true. You know. I had one, and, and uh, uh, he's, he's gone on to be with Jesus, and I'm really, uh, I'm really angry with him about that. But... Uh, but uh, he, he was with me for, for years. We did hundreds of, literally, and that's true. That's not an exaggeration. We did hundreds of meetings together. And he, but he got in latter years where uh, he couldn't remember what I was saying when I forgot what I was saying. And I would forget, and I'd look at him and say, David, what was I saying? He'd say, oh, I, I can't remember. I said, well, I fired him. You know, I I hated to do it. He had ten kids, and I thought, my God, we've got ten kids. But um, anyway, ruthless, you know. So, so what was I talking about? <laughs> Third, heaven. Third heaven. Yeah, he said. So the, he said he saw things, and he heard things, and whatever whatever he saw and heard there in the third heaven, so changed his life. It so affected him. It, you know, it must, obviously, it was tremendously, tremendously impacting and powerful to the point that, that everything he had gained and acquired up to that time, he counted as nothing as lost. I mean, how powerful is that? And, and uh, so when I, when I saw that, I was really challenged by it, and, I, and especially by... When he, when he said there that it was unlawful for him to say to speak those things, and that really aggravated me because I wanted to know, you know. Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah, I wanted to know what did he see and experience that so changed his life in, in the course of his life. He, like, he was not an inexperienced person at that time, like you, like you are not, you know. But, but the, at that time, it was so overwhelming, so powerful, that it, 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 it ended a phase of his life and started a new phase. Yeah. And, and, and Jesus is, is, wants that. He, 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 he appreciates people uh, that says, well, I want to I wanna see what he saw. I want to hear what he heard. I want my life to be changed like that. Yeah. Jesus respects hungry people. Yes. He honors hungry people. He favors hungry people. He favors those who will pursue through every season, through the, through the joy and the tears that will never stop their pursuit. And he, and he also appreciates those who says, well, Lord, I appreciate the bread. You are the bread but I want some meat. Or if you're, if you're eating meat, and Lord, the meat's been good, but man, I, need to go. I think I want something stronger. And then you come to a place in your life where you say, Lord, you said that to me it's given to know those secrets of the kingdom of God. Yes. I want to know them. Yes. I want to know them. And Jesus wants you to know them because they are, that's the food, that's the meat of the overcomers. 
Every, every overcomer is in the church, but every member of the church is not an overcomer. And if you know your scripture at all, you know that the greatest promises, of the most eternal promises of the Bible, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, are, are distinguished to those who overcome. Well, what, ha what about those who do not overcome? Well, uh, I, I think, personally, my theology says that they will be happy in heaven for a long time, yeah, yeah. But overcomers have a place of function in the kingdom that is never about them. It's always about him and it's always about the kingdom. And it's working with him in establishing and maintaining a kingdom on the earth, which was the purpose of our father from the beginning. He wanted a human family. He wanted a representation of him on the earth. And he's never, ever given up on that, nor will he ever give up on that thing. But it, 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 it includes those who catch a vision of it. Uh, this will encourage you that, um, and I realized uh, two things about, about uh, unlawful to speak. First, my first thing I realized about it was that he, 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 he said he wasn't permitted to speak it, but he clearly could write it. And it, it's, you, it's, it, it's, you, if you're looking for it in the scriptures, he tells you exactly what he saw and exactly what he heard. Of course, it's hidden there, but it's not hidden from you, it's hidden for you. It's hidden for you to, to find, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you know, you first of all, see that it's there, and you go digging, you know. Uh, have you, we live out near the beach in Florida, and, and once in a while, and, 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 you know, you'll be proud of me for this, because we moved to Florida to be close to the beach, and we've been there now since last November, and I've already been twice to the beach, you know. So, yeah, and, uh, but then on one of the times I've been there, uh, I noticed a man on the beach with a, a metal detector. You know, you've seen these, seen those guys. You know, they're walking around, there, and they're finding all kinds of little treasures. And then they've got their little shovel and thing. You know, and they'll stop and they'll get down and they'll start digging and digging, and they'll come up with something. I thought, wow, well, I, I ought to try that. I'm a treasure hunter. I admit it hard. I, I, that's why. That's how I approach the scripture with my treasure finder. You know, and so. He, he wants you to, he wants to draw you uh, to himself in, in the scripture, and he wants you to be an overcomer. Uh, well, the, you know, the, the thing that qualifies and makes you an overcomer is you've overcome something, you know. That's, that's, I mean, I know that's deep, but, the first, but that's just the way it is. You, so that can explain some of the issues that come into your life. Some of the things that you have to face or get to face, you get to overcome them. Because you, when you do, you gain something eternal that others simply do not have. It, it doesn't make us special in any way. It makes us different. You know, it makes us different. Uh, people respond to Jesus and they uh, pursue him however they want to. But, uh, but that's true of us as well. Some are more passionate than others. Some are more expressive than others, and, that, and that's fine. But you're free to be who you are, and you're free to pursue how you pursue and however you want to pursue and how passionately you want to pursue. And no one, no um, uh, apostle or prophet or pastor or, or bishop or pope or anybody else has any authority to deny you access to the Lord Jesus and have any, no one has any authority to tell you to be quiet or to sit down or to don't, you know, you know, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, you know, you all know the story about Jesus and the donkey, you know, yeah, and so he's riding this donkey and the, the, the people like us, if we were, if you were there that day and, and I'd know for sure what Marty would be doing, she'd be laying on the ground crying, crying out, you know, and because that's what she does. And, 
And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, well, I could, he, he told, the, the Pharisee said, tell the people to be quiet. And he said, well, okay, I can do that. And if I told them to do that, they would do that. They would be quiet. But if they were to cry out, if they were to be quiet, the very rocks would cry out. Well, why did he say that? Well, uh, because Jesus was and is the, the Ark of the Covenant. He is the, the, the presence, the manifest, tangible presence of God. And the law of God is that the ark only moves to a sound. So if the people were not given a sound and the ark was moving, then the rocks would have to cry out because in the move of God, somebody's shouting. Somebody's crying out. Somebody's lifting up their voice. So just a, just a little tidbit for you there, you know. But there's a re Jesus had absolute reason to do everything. And a lot of what he did, he did deliberately to insult the religious community, the Pharisees, you know, the Sadducees. Oh, the donkey! Well, the donkey! The, oh, well, the donkey was just Jesus, his way of insulting them because they knew that he should be on their shoulders. The Pharisees, that they knew the law, they knew. No, don't mistake me. So they knew exactly what they were doing, and they refused to to carry him in. They refused to acknowledge him. So he says, "Well." Then I'll get the next best thing. I'll get a donkey, you know, and ride him. You know, it, it infuriated him. I can tell you. So, and uh, and uh, he, uh, he 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 God, he likes doing that. He's, uh, <laughs> there, there's a there's <laughs> there's a side of him that. <laughs> He's the real deal, man. He's the real deal. And um, so many, for whatever, unfortunately know the, only know the, the public Jesus. But he wants to make himself known. And, and he is, and he does, and he wants to continue that. So you can, you can say, you know, I know him. Oh, I know him. Remember, uh, oh, uh, oh, I can't go there. Dan, don't do that. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you about the first time I saw him. <laughs> nope, I'm doing it. I already talked to him about that. And I said, Jesus, I'm not going to get out of there today and go get to bawling and squalling. I'm not, not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> this is so wonderful. I forgot what I was talking about. Seeing Jesus. Seeing Jesus. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you this one. He came for me. I was in my prayer room alone. I saw him coming in the distance. And and the the first the first thing when when I saw him, the first thing was his absolute dominion. Yeah, I can't describe that, but his dominion is absolute. And, um, and what that means is it's impossible for anything to move him. It's impossible for anything to disturb him. It's impossible for anything to challenge him. It's impossible for anything to upset him. It's impossible for anything to, to challenge him in any way. Absolute dominion. And and it's and it's you discern it. There, he's he's not overly huge or or mutton. It's not a, it's not in the it's not in the flesh at all. It's in the spirit. But it's absolute dominion. And he, he was coming. He was coming close, walking in my direction. And and there was some. It was that we were outdoors like it, like this, and there was some foliage around. And he was taking his time because he 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 stopped. And, and if there was if a plant or flower was there, he stopped, and he he looked with with interest at every every detail. See, this you just have, you, it's difficult to describe except in human language, but it it's as though he was genuinely interested 
in every single detail of that thing. He just looked at it in wonder. I mean, you know, when you realize that he was the creator of it, you think, well, you're, is he admiring your own work? Well, I, I don't know. I just know what he did. He was just in every, he noticed every detail. And then he, he came for me and he took me into a banquet room and um, there were many, many people there. And um, there was a lot of conversations going on. And, uh, and I didn't, and, and when we went into the, to the banquet, um, I didn't see him anymore. But, but, it, but there were many, many guests and there were many servants. Some, some had uh, uh, trays of hors d'oeuvres and drinks and different things and there were people uh, 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 men dressed in tuxedos and women in, in, in evening gowns. There, and it was obviously a reception of some type. And, and then there were the servants who were also dressed in formal uh, attire, both men and women. And I'm looking at this, and I, this is what I noticed, that uh, everyone there, the, the guest and, the, and, the, the, and the, the friends, the guests, the servants, where everyone were 100% totally happy, joyful, and fulfilled. There, there, there was like no class distinction. It, it, was, it didn't exist. It, but everyone was very happy, very content in their place. And, it, and, and I, what I recognized was that in that environment, in, in his Jesus presence, that there's a distinction that you just have just trust me with this, but there was a distinction between his friends and his ser and the servants, okay? Now, everyone was happy. Everyone was joyful. Everyone was, they were, they, they were all equally delighted, but there was a difference between, between those who were there to serve and those that were there as guests of, of the bridegroom. And now, it, you know, it's, I'm careful with this because in the truest sense of the word, we're all servants. We're all his servants. We're all subjects of the kingdom. We're all his servants. But nonetheless, there was a distinction between those that had perhaps decided uh, or to be friends. You know. all, I, all I can tell you is how it impacted my life. And, and my response was, well, Jesus, I'm, you know, I'm your, I'm your joyful servant. I'll, ser I'll serve you. But if, if I am invited to be a friend, I won't be your friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, I, I, don't, I don't always get through that story sober. Uh, yeah. But it was impacting in my life. And, uh, and Jesus wants to impact your life. And as much as we appreciate the ministry of, of men and women, and we do respect our leaders, you know, but I'm telling you, there's, there are things that only Jesus can say to you. There are promises that only he can make. I, I, I think that some preachers, and I've been guilty of myself, uh, making promises or, or, or committing, committing Jesus to, to things by saying to someone, oh, well, well, you know, Jesus will heal that or Jesus will take care of that. And he corrected me that. And he said, Dan, uh, the, only, the only thing you can commit me to right, is, Dan, you, you can commit me to, to say to anyone, today is this day of salvation. Jesus will save you today. He says, you, you, you have the authority to commit me to that. But other, but other things, you want to be careful of, of committing me to things that I may or may not be committed to myself. You understand the, the principle that I'm saying? And, and uh, so I think sometimes preachers are maybe just a little bit aggressive or a little bit presumptuous to make this. And, because it's clear that faith comes by hearing, by hearing by a word from God to your life. So I think that uh, I'm sure of it, that what is going to lead you forward 
from these days. I, I did my best last night to communicate how critical and how prophetic this, this event right here really is. As, as innocent as it looks and as you know, unthreatening as it looks or whatever, I'm telling you, it's major. It's major in your life. It's major. Yeah. Uh, uh, try to trust me in that. Yeah, yeah. But you need. You're going to need your wa your walk on the trail. You're you're going to need your time to encounter him. Because what he has for you, and what he's offering for you, you need to hear it from him. Why is that? Because of the initiation. Because you will have to be initiated into it, and and we don't want to make that a negative or a scary thing. We want to just show you that it's part of the process. You have to buy the truth, and Jesus is the truth, you know. And you so you have to buy the truth and sell it, and and not sell it, not give it up. So this is this is just the the, the nitty gritty where where Christians are living today, and where we're called to live. In a, in a holy communion with him that he can trust us first with himself yeah and I know you I know you want to be that person that he can trust first with himself that he can commit himself and you know that that's so dangerous in in the day in which we live you know and, and in fact it, it's it's so dangerous as many times it's not even worth the risk to to commit too much of yourself or or too much of your resources or too much of anything to people but, but uh, Jesus wants to solicit you he wants to he wants to draw you he wants to reveal himself to you so that you can trust him and in turn so he can trust you with the greatest commodity the greatest commodity in the world today is truth. The greatest lack in the world today is truth. And Jesus is the truth. And the greatest need in the world today is light. Well, he is the light of the world, but not only him. He says that we are the light of the world, too. So he, he, he will have his sons and his daughters that are trustworthy, they've been proven in the fire. He knows they can he can trust them with himself, with his truth, with his resources. You know, we uh, we some some are talking about the, this great transfer of wealth, and I believe that I do, and I believe that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. I believe that because it's written. But to whom can he trust? Who can he trust with those riches? And and I and I believe that that to Jesus his most precious, the most precious thing to him, uh, his people, his people, his, and, and and the children, God's children, and we have now emerging in the United States and around the world a whole new generation of spiritual babies. They're, they're being saved by the multitudes, okay, and they're spiritual babies. Well, Jesus needs to have somebody that he can trust those children to. Can he trust you with his children? You know, can, can he trust you with his revelation? Can he, can he trust you with what the Apostle Paul saw in the third heaven? You know, the Bible is clear that things that have been hidden for generations are now being revealed. See, that, that rings my bell. If, if there are things that have been re hidden that are now being revealed, I want to know. Can I get an amen? Sense? Amen. I want to know. I want to know. I don't know why I want to know them. It'd probably be easier not to know them if you got the Apostle Paul in a mess, you know. But, uh, but you know, if we're looking for an easy way, I'm sorry, we have nothing for you. <laughs> you know? But if you're looking for a way that works, I can tell you, we have a way that works. It's drawing close to him, uh, letting him prove you. You understand he loves you. You understand his invitation. 
that and as I as I attempted last night to kind of bring things you know as practical as possible, you we, you and myself we've just completed a season of our life. We've just we've been through the tabernacles. We've been we've been through a Passover and Pentecost, and now tabernacles, and that's celebrating that season of fruitfulness, and you're rewarded according to that fruitfulness of what of the of the life you have just completed some of you have been more more faithful more fruitful than others but but we're not competing with anybody else we're competing with ourselves you know uh, but according to that then so so that that harvest now has has been consumed that harvest has been reached that phase of your life has been concluded.